What's up guys, it's Sam here from EDM Prod and today I've got a quick video uh, but it should be a helpful video and it's on key bindings. So if you're not aware already, in Ableton Live you can create key bindings. So you can click on something like this kick and then click on this EQ or right click on it, click edit key map and you can assign a key to this. So if we uh, chose the key one for example, Every time I press 1 on my keyboard, the EQ will turn on or off. So, I'm going to get rid of that for now. And I'm going to show you 10 key mappings that can significantly speed up your workflow. Uh, so, some of these are already keyboard shortcuts, but using the keys 1 through to 0 on the keyboard, uh, I'm going to show you a few things you can do with key, mapping, key bindings. Sorry. So the first one is uh, the auto filter on and off. And you probably know this by now, but one thing you can do when you're mixing your low end, uh, or you just want to hear how your low end sounds, is you can use an auto filter uh, to just kind of solo out the low end. So if I play this as it is, you hear the full mix. But then I could turn this auto filter on and we hear the low end. Now we can assign a key binding to this. So you could assign the key one. And now every time we want to um, check our low end quickly, we can just press one. So that's the first one. The second one is uh, kind of the same thing. Oh, sorry, in the same effect, but you're changing the filter type. So sometimes you might want to do the same kind of, um, use the same kind of technique, but check the high end. So you could so you have that instead uh, so we can assign a key mapping to this uh, the filter type so now when you click uh, the second key or the two key we get that we can switch between filter types which is cool now the third one is quantization so we can assign a key mapping to this uh, so we can call that three and now when we're recording or whatever, we can just quickly uh, click through that key, the number three, and change the quantization. Uh, the fourth one I like to use is a metronome. <clears throat> Again, for recording. Uh, the fifth one is record. And it's bound to be a, a keyboard shortcut for something like this, but I like to have again, like I mentioned, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero assigned to certain key functions. It's just easier to remember than having to remember a keyboard shortcut that might be a bit more complex. Now, the sixth uh, keyboard or key binding, and by the way, you can check what you're binded to by clicking on key and then opening up the side or the browser where your samples would normally be. So you can see here I've got five key bindings. Now the next one we're gonna add is kick on. So, Going to edit the key map here and I'm going to assign the six heater. Now, the reason I do this is because sometimes you want to test how much impact your kick is having. So, you want to mute it for a certain section and then bring it back in and see if it has the right impact you want. Now, the seventh key binding I like to use is master limiter. So, normally I'll have a limiter on here, I'll just chuck one on. Um, sometimes you want to be able to hear your mix or your song. Uh, loud so it's kind of kind of to get an idea of how it would sound when it's released um, so you might have a limiter on here that's you know pushing quite loud and then you might assign a key binding to the on and off so you can quickly check how it sounds however if you're doing this uh, you do want to remember to turn your volume down uh, as you turn it on now the eighth key binding I like to use is the reference track. And as you, as you can see, I haven't got one here, but if I did, uh, we could call this reference. Let's say we had a reference track here and we wanted to quickly switch between it. Uh, the best way to do this is to assign a key mapping to the solo button. So we can have eight. And then we can, you know, quickly switch between our mix and the, the reference track. Now the last two are kind of interesting and this is where it gets a little bit more um, personal I suppose, this is something I like to do. So 
I always like to have a spectrum analyzer on my master. And you can, as you can see, I've got a span here. Now the problem is sometimes you want to be able to quickly open up span, uh, but not, you know, click on the master and have to open it. What we can do is assign a key map, two key mappings. So we can assign the first one to kick, just kick select. Oops, we'll make that nine actually, uh, because we've already got an eight. So we'll assign nine to that and we'll assign a 10 to master, oh, not 10, sorry, zero, to master select. So what this means is if we have span open, we can quickly switch between, sorry, kick and master and open up the spectrum analyzer while we're playing our song. And I'll just turn the kick back on. So that's a really cool little trick that I like to use. So we can, you know, switch back between that. Oh, we have to turn our auto filter off. Key one, no worries. So there you go. That's 10 key bindings that when you kind of master them and get the hang of them and remember them, it can speed up your workflow quite a lot. Uh, so I encourage you to try these out and experiment. Maybe try other key bindings, you know, that fit your workflow better. And also let me know what key bindings uh, you're using if you are using any. As always, have fun producing. Peace.